have stuff, but in a console on Linux, which is freaking awesome. So go with it, uh, Sean. All right. Um, I'm going to try to find my presentation. We're in a weird uh, place right now. With it only took 700 windows. It only, it only took 700 windows to figure this out. Let's see. No, not that. Not private mode. Just bear with me real quick. I mean, I'm sure this window's open. I just can't find it. You had it up on the screen over here. So yeah, I know, but it disappeared. Like, I switched every single screen. This ter this mouse is this mouse pad is terrible too. All right, um, almost there, almost <laughs> there. Let's see. All right. This hangout is like normal on my machine. Anyway, um, so like, I guess we'll go ahead and start. And hopefully my machine won't crash due to all the, the Hangout stuff that's going on. Um, but this is a presentation on live coding with clo Overtone and Clojure. Um, live coding is pretty cool. So what exactly is live coding if you can ignore my app bar, which isn't going away for some reason? Um, it's, just, it's just programming on the fly. Um, so you know if you've ever. Um, Taking a class, some sort of coding class, uh, usually the professor will sit up front and do his examples live in front of you. Um, a lot of times from notes, sometimes not, it just depends. Um, but probably in the last maybe 10 years, I guess that's right, um, you, uh, live coding is an art, it's an art form for like performing music or creating um, visual art, um, has sort of slowly. Uh, made its presence into the mainstream. Um, and Wikipedia uh, defines it as, um, or what, how it's used, is often used to create sound and image-based digital media. Um, and it's pretty prevalent in computer music. And usually you use algorithmic composition with some improvisation. And um, basically, all, all, uh, algorithmic composition is, is using algorithms to create sounds of some sort. Um, like I said, lots of interest in live coding in the last couple of years. Um, there's even an organization called TopLap, uh, basically to promote it. Um, and they've draft, drafted sort of a manifesto of what constitutes live coding is in the way they think about it. And I'm just going to sort of display that manifesto here. And you probably can't read that, so I'll just sort of read it. Um, so they demand that you give access to the former's mind, the whole human instrument. Um, but that usually, and next line is, um, you know, obscurity is dangerous, show us your screen. So that's part of the, what I'm going to do today. Basically, show everything you do so that um, the audience can see what you're doing. So, you know, if you've ever seen like electronic music performance, you usually just see a dude sit, standing on a laptop, you know, twisting knobs. Uh, they're trying to avoid that here. Like, they want to, they, you know, they want to show, they want be, uh, for people to be able to, you know, see what you're doing. Um, Programs are instruments that can change themselves. So, you know, you're writing a program that can maybe mod my, modify itself to do something musically or visually. Um, the program is to be transcended. Artificial language is the way. So basically, this is what this sort of says is, you know, you know, don't just think about the program. You know, there's more than just the program. It's more about like what the program is doing. Um, code should be seen as well as heard. It sort of amplifies the stuff that said before. And also, live coding is not about tools. So you know, just because I'm using Overtone doesn't really mean that like that is the one true way to do live coding. There's several different platforms, um, but just so happens that um, 
for some reason, the Lisp-based ba languages are pretty popular. Um, Haskell is pretty popular, too, which is kind of weird. Um, also, another part of the manifesto, um, inside and algorithms, basically that, you know, you, know, you want to be able to show people like what you're doing and why it is what you're doing. Um, no backup. And there's more. OK. So you know, what, what's the point and why, you know, why do people do this? Um, first line, art is cool, music is cool, computers are cool. So um, it's just sort of a way to combine like, all these things together into one um, interesting uh, new thing. Um, and usually when people think computers or coding, they don't really think creativity or um, you know, music or art. They just sort of like, they just think that you're sort of a machine that does stuff. Like, you don't have any creativity. So this sort of like disproves that notion. Um, it also brings uh, a unique example of improvisational performance um, and technological components together, which is another cool component. It's really neat. Um, Sort of like you see it as the computer as a musical instrument and not you know just a thing. Um, and also, it's just fun. Um, sort of talked about this earlier. Uh, Lisps are pretty popular for, for doing uh, live coding and computer music. Um, one big thing is that sort of there's a relationship between music and data and code that they're all really the same thing. And Lisps are homo, homo iconic, which means code is data and data is code. There's not really a big distinction between those two things. And since music is data, data is code, and code is data, they, they're all sort of uh, intermingled together. Um, so what is Overtone? Um, so Overtone is a, a closure-based platform that sits on top of Super Collider, which itself is a real-time audio synthesis platform. Um, is you might play with any of those things at all. Okay, um, so super like super has been around probably about 20 years, I think. It's been around a long time. Um, it's been used in um, font god art. Um, I think Phil Collins actually used it on one of his albums. So um, it's it's a pretty you know pretty good tool, uh, pretty useful, and um, it's it's written in C, so it, it's pretty quick. Um, the, like the, the closure talks directly to that, and so there's no real big bottleneck to what you're doing. Um, so you may ask, like, what exactly do you need to, to get started live coding? Um, so the setup I'm using uses uh, Clojure um, and Emacs Live, and I'm on Ubuntu. Um, but the same setup works on uh, other distributions of Linux and OS X, and probably Windows. Um, Overtone, or Clojure is Java-based. Um, Supercolor, I know, works on Windows. I've used it several times. Um, and then Emacs definitely runs on Windows. So the setup probably works, but I haven't tried it. But you can go home and try it and let me know. That'd be awesome. And then, uh, like I said, a text editor with a good REPL. So um, you'll be editing and running code live, not like, you know, not running it and then compile it and then running it. Um, so a text editor with a good REPL is uh, read, about evaluate, print loop. You, you might use that, probably. Um, so if you have an editor with that, that work, uh, that's the best. Um, and Vim, I, I usually actually use Vim for day-to-day -day work, but it's not that great as far as REPLs go. Um, and there, there, there is actually a closure uh, bridge from REPL, or from Vim to uh, closure, but it's, I, I've tried it for, for live coding stuff, and it doesn't work that great. Um, and the Overton authors actually uh, created this Emacs setup called Emacs Live that I've been talking about. Um, and they made it specifically for live coding. And it's, it's really good, works really well, has lots of out of the box that you would need to perform. Um, it's great. Um, basic music theory knowledge uh, is really useful. It can help a lot, but it's not really required. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff that doesn't require it. Um, noises are awesome, so you know you don't really need to know uh, much about music theory if, if you don't want to. Um, and usually when you see a live coding performance, they all have a bunch of toys on the front, like 
uh, keyboards and these little grid things uh, that's sort of like a, a bunch of squares laid out called a monom and things like that. Many instruments are awesome, but you don't, they're not required to do um, anything uh, fun. So, um, so yeah. And then some imagination. Um, uh, you just need some, uh, you, you need that for, for art and music to make, make cool stuff. I think this is in the presentation. Yes, it is. So right now, I'm going to attempt to um, make noises. Um, so hang on a second while I move uh, Emacs over into this fun time. Yeah, there we go. Can you might see that. You bump it up just slightly. I mean, I can't even see the. Uh, See the projector. Slide it forward. Yeah, awesome. Because I can't even control. Like, um, if I'm in the way, I may may need a chair. Um, because I may be sitting in the way. Yeah. Hopefully, this doesn't get too boring. So. If you ever watch, I don't know if you have watched a live coding performance before, but um, there's a lot of gaps in between when they're writing stuff, and it can get kind of boring until they start playing it. And I hope you know to minimize that as possible. Um, so here is Emacs. Um, I have a live ripple going right here. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and load some li uh, library real quick. If I can see what I'm doing. Um, and so that's going to load a, uh, a piano sample library so I can play piano sounds. So, uh, piano. And, y'all can hear that? So um, I just pass. Um, so I take this sample piano function that I loaded in from this library here. Oh, yeah, question. I was going to say, for somebody that's not used list before, you want to explain the reverse bullet notation and sort of what's going on? Yeah, good, good point. OK. Um, so in list, uh, you have, if you can see the parentheses, I hope so. Um, but uh, all your functions are wrapped in these things called as expressions. Um, basically, just parentheses, and so your uh, your actual function. So, like my function is sample piano, and then it takes one. Arg well, actually, it takes more than one, but no, wait, it takes one argument. And so uh, the arguments sort of go left to right. Um, so, like, do this first. So this this note four would be my first argument, right? And that uh, this is actually returning a value. Uh, if it's wrapped in parentheses like that, the function is actually being evaluated. Um, and, um, and if, if I were at, uh, passing another argument, um, each argument is separated by a space. So I would be evaluating the sample piano function with uh, four arguments. And then um, if, they're wrapped, if they're in parentheses like that, the function is actually being evaluated. But if I'm, if I'm passing a function, um, say, let's, some, let's say I'm passing a function to another function. Let's just say, like, let's pretend this function uh, awesome exists. And then I want to pass it um, this simple, pian like, let's say this, uh, this awesome function runs, uh, runs some algorithm, play a sound, and I need to pass instruments to it. And within this awesome function, it actually evaluates the, uh, the instrument. So instead of evaluating the instrument here, um, in the argument, I pass in the sample piano like this. And it passes in, hang on, a, shoot. passes in a reference to that function and not the evaluated function. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and that is Lisp and X expressions and like a crappy explanation in a nutshell. Um, but, um, so from here, we play a sound. Um, 
Let's do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna write a little sequencer real quick. Um, and so, let's see. Hopefully. And then I have this little key combination I use to evaluate these functions. And uh, Overtone has a bunch of uh, little functions in here to uh, help help do various things like. So there's a website called freesound.org that has a ton of samples that you can use in your music. Um, and it has a function that basically all I do is pass it the ID and it'll load in the sound and play it. So if I do snare, you should hear a snare hopefully, or a kick, like that. And then, um, let's see. So I'm going to continue writing my sequence here. Uh, I need a metronome. Um, so a cool thing about Overtone, it has the scheduling system built in. So you can do things like a, like a, um, like a sequencer. Um, so you can basically schedule things that happen at a certain time in, in sequence. Um, and that's what you need for a sequencer. Um, so I'm going to define my metronome. Let's see. Let's see. See, let's do like 140 beats a minute. All right, now I got my metronome, and then um, I want to play some chords. So I'm going to find some chords here. If I can not let's see chord. Uh, how about a D minor? So like it has these really neat uh, helper functions that allow me to define chords and scale, or to, to uh, output chords and scales. Um, so here I'm defining, uh, I'm telling it to give me a D minor. And then, let's see. Let's do A, let's do A, let's do A7. Go from a minor one to a major uh, to major five, and then a C. And the cool, uh, one cool thing about um, this Emacs setup is that is the snippets. Uh, you may like you may be goofing around, and you find something really cool that you want to save and use later. Um, and I, I usually do that a lot. So here um, I have a bunch of my boilerplate code for my sequencer already set up. So all I do is sort of type in the name of the, te the template and hit tab, and magically I have a sequencer already set up. And all I have to do is evaluate it. It's kind of cool. Um, I think one thing I forgot to do actually, I needed to find a function to play uh, to play a chord. So I'm going to write that real quick. So I have my chord. This, I mean, writing a function takes an argument. And I need uh, to basically uh, play the note. Uh, note. OK. Sample piano. Uh, end. Is that right? Is that a typo? Or? Oh, no. I'm missing a. Missing a parens. So that's what happens when you do something wrong. You'll do that. So do seek. And OK, sample piano. I'm missing a pipe. That's weird. OK, there we go. So here, um, this do seek basically uh, uh, iterates through this list of, of pitches and we'll play the piano sound um, for each one. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Play chord. Let's play this. Uh, let's, uh, choose chords. And I probably goofed. Where we goof? Oh. Yep. I passed it in the wrong thing. 
And if I could fix my mistake, I could redefine it if I want. Okay, now this should work. And so what I'm doing here is I'm playing a chord and I'm passing in uh, this evaluated cheese chord. So uh, another thing it has, Overton has, is these uh, probab probabilistic uh, functions. So if I want to randomly choose um, from a list of chords, I can. Um, so every time I run this, it'll choose a random chord. All right. So I already have my sequencer functions uh, in. So let's just play those real quick. Uh, player, player, run, seek, metro. And another thing, so this metronome is constantly going. So I can evaluate it any time. Uh, and it'll show you what beat it's on. And you can't really see it. I hope. Well, no, you can't. Um, but now I should be able to pass stuff in the bar and it play. So we're going to do that real fast. All right. Um, so I'll explain the player function a little bit. So it takes in this bar, this map called bar. Um, that's what the little uh, curly bracket, uh, bra I'm trying to do a curly bracket with my hand, but um, that is, uh, ins instead of parentheses, we're using curly bracket, and the reference is a map or a hash table and closure. Um, and what we're doing, we're basically each beat um, is a key, and it reads through each key and um, uh, th and this is the part of scheduling, the scheduling function, this at function, if you can see that. Um, it reads through each, through each key, and at that, at that, uh, at that key, it'll schedule that, um, this, uh, the beat, for, um, it's, it's, it'll schedule the <coughs> stuff that's in this list at the right beat, is what I'm trying to say. So let's go ahead and just, and, uh, just do something. So. So you hear like, yeah. Is that too loud? Okay. <laughs> so you see, like it, it plays once every four beats. Uh, let's go ahead and do like a. Let's see. I think this quarter press is gonna be too sad for that kick. Let's do like change it, change it to major. And then let's throw in this chord prog progression to play. And you see it's taking in uh, a list of, of unevaluated functions. Um, and that's what I was talking about earlier. So this player takes in these unevaluated functions and evaluates them here. Let's see? Yeah, right there. So we, like, we want to pass it in something to be evaluated. So we're going to do, um, we're going to do, let's play a chord. You know what? I forgot to to redefine chords, so we'll change it back to. There we go. Let's see. And then let's let's do some more beats. actually do uh, uh, subdivisions of the beat like we don't have to do that whole we can so like, if I want to syncopate I could do like 1.85 uh, let's see now let's do a snare I 
like that a little bit. There we go. There we go. And then like if you want to maybe change the chord while you're playing the beat, you can. Like I said earlier, um, let's see. I'm trying to think the G. Here we go. Change it to a G. Shoot. Played around with this way to generate um, generate music from a sentence. Let's see if we can get that going. this works. And then let's do like a quarter note. Um, and then metro. Let's do, uh, let's do eighth notes. change we can change the scale uh, while we're evaluating it um, if you can still hear me so like let's say um, let's say I want to do uh, a mixolydian instead of a instead of D major kind of a difference but it's really it's the same notes but starting a different place so you may not hear a major difference um, especially since we are yeah okay um, probably tired of that so we can kill uh, we can kill the server with a stop and that stops the server um, so I, let's go back and do, like, sort of look over some of this code to see what, like, 
why it does what it does. Uh, especially the sentence of notes, because I didn't really even go over that. Um, so if you can see this at all, so what I wanted to do is, is map uh, the ASCII, ASCII values of characters um, to a scale. And that's what this does here. So basically, um, I do that. I convert, I take in a sentence as, a, as an argument, and then convert it to its ASCII value, integer values. Um, and then um, I use this uh, scale range function that basically uh, takes, a, uh, takes a value and maps it to a range of numbers. And that's kind of what we want. And you'll, you'll sort of lose, uh, like, let's say we're, if we're doing a sign function and we're using that, you'll lose some of the, like, the fine grain, grainness of it. But it'll, it'll roughly approximate, like, what's going on. Um, and then the scale notes is just a list of notes. And play words, all it does is uses this, is it, it iterates through um, the sentence to notes output and schedules each, each, uh, each character at, at a beat. Um, and based on the speed that you give it. So I can pass it, this, this, uh, this floating point number specify, like I can do, so this 0 0.5 basically said uh, half of the beat, which is an eighth note. Um, and then this uh, three-fourths of the beat, which is, um, which is a dotted eighth note. Um, and then you can do a quarter note one, and so, and so on and so forth. Um, let's see. What else can I show you guys? So the scale mapper there, does it just do like an eight note scale and try to map it to one of the <laughs> Um, so, so the, the speed, uh, it's, it's, it's variable, so that's what this, like, um, if I pass it in one, it'll take in, uh, it'll use the metronome and schedule it at, like, at each metronome beat. No, not, not the speed. How many notes come out of that? Oh, how many notes? I mean, is it just oh, it's, your basic... I have it hard, have it, I have it hard coded in. Um, so it'll take in, uh, a ma uh, 15. So... No, 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 I'm sorry. It, it's zero, uh, 0 to 15, which is 16. I'm sorry. Um, basically, what it generates is uh, indexes to grab uh, from this uh, combined uh, array, uh, list here. So here, I'm actually combining two arrays together, so I get 16 total. Because um, a major scale, um, major scale and minor scale are both eight notes. Uh, and what I did is combine two octaves of them together, which makes 16. And so here, I am basically mapping each ASCII value and then using the scale range value to convert that to an index of this, of this list so that then I can play it. So that's where you lose granularity. It's when you're going from 128 down to 16. Right. You some, lose some of your granularity. Right. The, the, the more I have, the, 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 uh, the more granular it is. Um, now, is it because of the MIDI voice that you're stuck with the just the keys on the keyboard? Um, in between. So, uh, like, uh, half tones? Like half tones? Half tones? Microtones? Um, you, can do, you can do microtonal stuff with this. I'm just not super into it. Okay, I was just curious. Uh, yeah, you can do, you, I mean, uh, let's see. I think I have an instrument that takes a hertz. Let's see. Let's do B. Go. Yeah, so here's, here's an example. Like, so you can define instruments um, using uh, 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 SuperCollider's uh, synthesis engine. Um, and basically, uh, a bunch of, like this line and this sign OSC are actually, like, they're just, they're really just macros for, t uh, on top of some stuff that talks to SuperCollider. So, um, and it actually takes a, a frequency as an argument. So like, let's see, um, let's just do beep at 440, which is an A, wait, not four. So there's your 440. Now let's do like a microtone. So like, um, let's do 440.5. You probably can't tell the difference. It's a little sharp. Let's do 441. You probably still can't even tell the difference. 
see too. Oh, there we go. It's a little, I, it sounds a little sharper than me. Um, try to find one that, it's not a defined like note within the standard A equals 440, but is it actual the next note? Well, the point is you can do microtones. Okay. But I'm, I'm not like I'm not being successful at doing them here. Um, let's see. You want to hear dubstep? Yeah. Okay. It's that thing I was playing at the beginning. So uh, to sort of explain, I didn't actually write this. I thought it sounded cool. And I found it somewhere and put it in a, as a snippet. Um, but what it is, this guy like. Uh, is insane, and he uh, modeled some dubstep into Super Collider, and then somebody converted it over, and this is what it sounds like. Uh, so that's what all that garbage sounds like. Um, and um, I'm not very good at modeling instruments yet. I'm just I'm pretty good at the algorithmic stuff, uh, algorithmic composition. Uh, trying to learn, learn more about the, the synth um, modeling stuff. But it's definitely pretty powerful. Um, and I see we have like 10 minutes left, roughly. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop and then answer questions if you have any. Um, so this is obviously good for like <coughs> live coding and Um, there are like, so, uh, are there any, like, artists, well, there, there's, so, algor you know, algorithmic composition is, is a thing outside of, of the computer world. Um, composers like Steve Reich, uh, you've heard of him, and, uh, uh, God, Carl, um, Stockhausen, another guy too. Um, so, uh, uh Steve Reich actually composed a piece. Uh, uh, piano phase, I think. So basically, the deal is you have two piano players playing the exact same phrase at the same time, and then slowly over time, uh, the second piano player uh, speeds up until the first note of the second piano player matches the second note of the first guy. So, uh, I mean, it's definitely a thing outside of this. There have been pieces composed outside of uh, the computer world for uh, compositions. Um, another one is, uh, man, um, the guy that did uh, 4 minutes 40 seconds. Do I remember? Uh, uh, Cage. Cage. John Cage. John Cage. He's another guy, too. I think he actually took like a star map and uh, put it on a piece of sheet music and told somebody to play it. Um, so that's another thing, too. Um, Let's see. Uh, there's there's a ton of different resources for for learning about it. Um, none of, none of the which I have on top of my head right now. But if you want to talk later, I can talk to you. Um, is there somebody else? Uh, today. <laughs> um, I mean, so you may not know this about me, but I've probably been performing music as long as I've been coding. Um, I used. I mean, I've I've done like, I've, I played in pit orchestras for musicals, and uh, I used to gig and do weddings and stuff. So as far as also marsh like in high school band like since like the seventh grade. So um, I've been performing music a really long time. Um, this is my. F I I've looked into overtone for a, a long time. This is just sort of the first like take it seriously moment, but. Um, I don't, I'd totally love to do, do this live somewhere. Why not? <laughs> have you have you explored using real world inputs as kind of and then mapping and using? Stuff I'd like, like to. Um, it'd be really cool to do that. And it, like or even data streams. Right. And, and in previous previous um, uh, when I was when I was in Rome, I, I was working with the makerspace there, and they kind of want to do the same thing, but it just sort of didn't. 
and turn to fruition. So I'd totally love to do it here, especially since like we have plenty of data streams to play with. Uh, have you seen anybody um, tying this stuff into like the ASIC suite, or I guess that would also be like real world inputs for like using push or like one of the other like MIDI instruments to tie back into overtime? I've heard of that. I've just never I've never seen anybody do it. Um, okay. It's just another way. Like you should be able to. I know people have done it. I just don't know how. Um, Oh, uh, okay. All right. I might, I might talk to you later. <laughs> cool. I'm glad, glad you liked it, man. Um, Any more questions? Any more questions?